Святий Святий Безсмертний, помилуй нас. Святий Боже, Святий Крепкий, Святий Безсмертний, помилуй нас. Святий Боже, Святий Крепкий, Святий Безсмертний, помилуй нас. Слава Отцу і Сину і Святому Духові, і нині посе час і на віки вічні. Амінь. О Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord cleanse us from our sins. Master pardon our transgressions. Holy One visit us and heal our infirmities for your name's sake. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Oh, my 
from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Church, 
that we all may be delivered from all affliction, wrath, danger, spiritual or physical need, that we all may live in peace, good health, and well-being all the days of our life. O oh, merciful Lord, hear us and have mercy. bring offerings and do the works in this holy and venerable space for those who serve and those who sang and for all the people here present and those that are praying with us via mobile devices who await your great and abundant mercy. And those who journey far from home, be gracious to us sinners, Master. Be gracious to us and have mercy on us, for you are a merciful and loving God. And we give you glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. the helper of the affronted, the hope of the hopeless, the defender of the poor, the consolation of the sorrowful, the nourisher of the hungry, the garment of the naked, the healing of the sick, the salvation of sinners, and have the help of the, and, and defense of all Christians. Sovereign Lady, Virgin Birth, giver of God in your compassion, save and have mercy on all the Holy Orthodox Patriarchs, the most reverend metropolitans, archbishops and bishops, and all the priestly and monastic orders, along with our Christ-living civil authorities and armed forces and all Orthodox Christians, defending them with the precious veil of your protection. Holy Lady, entreat Christ our God, who was incarnate of you without seed, that he gird us with his power from on high against our enemies, both visible and invisible. O merciful, sovereign Lady, birth giver of God, raise us, raise us up from the depths of sin, and deliver us from famine, destruction, earthquake, and flood, from fire and aggression, from foreign invasion and civil war, from sudden death and from attack of enemies, from noxious winds, death-bearing plagues, and from all evil. Grant, O Holy Mother, peace and health to your servants, all Orthodox Christians, and especially those who graduate from our seminary this day, and all those here present, and enlighten their minds and hearts, and the eyes of their hearts, to salvation. Count your servants worthy of the kingdom of your Son, Christ our God. For blessed and most glorified is his dominion, together with his Father without beginning, and his all good and life-giving Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Through the 
prayers of his most holy mother, of the holy and God-bearing fathers, and of all the saints, have mercy upon us and save us, for as much as he is good and loves mankind. Oh. morning. 
We are going to start with our valedictorian addresses. And so I am going to ask Subdeacon Yaroslav Bilohan to please come forward to give the first address. Christ is risen. Christos was Christ. By the grace of God, another academic year has come to the end at St. Sophia Theological Seminary. Today we have all of our graduates gathered together in this hall as we celebrate their hard work and monumental achievements. It is not only a celebratory day, but one that we will cherish and remember forever. Today convinces us all of virtue of one secret biblical truth. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. If entering St. Sophia Seminary was a new page in our life, then today marks the beginning of the whole new novel called Independent Life. Today freedom extends its arms to each of us, but we must learn not to abuse it. Because true freedom exists only when responsibility for our actions and thoughts begin. However, we must remember that by working on this path of responsibility of service to people, we will be responsible not for ourselves, not only for ourselves, but also for the flock entrusted to us by the Lord. I remember like it was yesterday when we were given the blessing to wear our cassocks and only a handful had the re realization that our first semester was the start of new responsibility and it was the first step of the spiritual journey where we're going to start. Within the walls of our St. Sophia Seminary we not only learn theology but we learn how to live. We had our first victories and defeats heard words of disappointment and joy, and we, and we made many mistakes. But over the years, they had become good lessons in our lives. So today I have a great honor to express my gratitude to our bishops, His Eminence Metropolitan Anthony and His Eminence Archbishop Daniel, who have become our parents and the best advisors in all of our life situations over the years. I also have another great honor. I would like to thank all the professors and teachers of St. Sophia Seminary for your efforts and unimaginable hard work. Dear teachers, you have always been there for us and provided words of wisdom, helpful advice, and were guides for those who got lost as well as for those who were looking. We all understand that during our training each of you gave us a piece of your heart. Perhaps there were times that we may have disappointments, disappointed you, or have um, or made you nervous. But you continued to love and help us grow. Forgive us. For our young minds, we did not always listen to your advice. Believe that what you have said has become a wise lesson for all of us. Today we want to thank that we want to thank you all for each one of you put the hundred percent of your efforts into our education and burned like a lighted torch illuminating our path of our learning. I also would like to thank the entire Ukrainian Orthodox Church of America, all the people who have supported and helped us get familiar with the ministry of service during all our years of study at the seminary and for contributing their time and generosity of our opportunity to study in the United States. Years will pass and we will remember with love and awe in our hearts our ministry, liturgies, prayers, lectures, 
conferences, concerts, memorable evenings. Thank you for all the wonderful memories you have given us. Also, present today are those who have the opportunity to watch this ceremony via mobile devices, namely our parents, grandparents, brothers and sisters, relatives. Thank you, family and friends, for always believing in us and for the thousand of words of support you expressed, which were able to comfort us even from thousands of miles away. So, dear gratitudes, today is our day. Even though there is still a lot of work ahead of us, we successfully made it to the finish line. And today we are champions. I want to wish all of us to stand on the right path of achieving our set goals in life and always remember that true pastor must learn throughout his life and never, never stop there. Thank you. дивляться на сьогодні через мобільні пристрої, котрі споглядають за церемонію а, через а, мобільні пристрої в Україні. А, хотів би подякувати всім вам, батьки, родичі, друзі, всі наші рідні, котрі всі ці роки перебували разом з нами і підтримували нас протягом нашого навчання. І я хочу, щоб ви знали, що всі ваші молитви і добрі бажання нам дійшли до нас через тисячі мей, і ми дякуємо вам і від щирого серця. There really should be a commercial break. We're used to that here in America. And one of the things that I would like to say is that if you turn to the very back page of your programs today, you will notice the various scholarship funds that we have. Um, and these scholarship funds were given to the seminary in order to keep it feasibly safe as we go through every year financially. And so as also not only a faculty member but treasurer of the, the St. Sophia Seminary, I would also like to thank all those who contribute to the seminary throughout the year. It is only through the scholarship funds and your kind contributions that we are able to sustain our seminary. So without further ado, as you had might noticed in the program, and I should have mentioned it, that Subdeacon Yadislav is representing the Masters of Divinity program here at our seminary. So do we have a second valedictorian address? And that is Subdeacon James R. Cummings, who is representing the Masters in applied orthodox studies. Christ is risen. Indeed he is risen. I cannot stand here today without thanking Almighty God, for in whom we live, move, and have our being, without whose unassuming love and care this day would never have seen the light of day. May the praise of his name resound throughout all creation forever. Amen. We would like to thank his beatitude, Metropolitan Antony, and his eminence, Archbishop Daniel, for all their love and patience they have shown us these past three years. We're deeply grateful to you for your paternal presence today and for who you are to us. When we call to mind the fact that we are currently reaping the fruits of your numerous contributions to this noble institution. And for the St. Sophia Seminary Board of Trustees, Father Vasil Pasakas, for your many contributions to the seminary and to us seminarians to reverend professors and members of our formation and academic staff, 
Pani Maria, for all the wonderful food that you have served us. Our dis distinguished guests, parents, family, friends, and well-wishers, our revered reverend deacons and seminarians, our highly esteemed fellow graduates, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Holy Scripture tells us in Ecclesi Ecclesiastes chapter 3, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. In line with this, the ancient Greek philosopher Heraclitus of Ephesus once said that nature is in constant state of flux, such as one cannot step into the same river twice. And this is the only thing that is permanent in this ephemeral world, is change itself. Yes, things change, people change, situations change for better or for worse. This change is characterized by meetings and partings, and we shall continue to meet and part until we meet to part no more. It is against this backdrop that the Scottish novelist R.M. Ballantyne once said, to part is the lot of all mankind, and the world is a scene of constant leave-taking. Parting moments like this give us pause for reflection. When we remember, reminisce upon our experiences here this past three years, our hearts are filled with joy for the challenges encountered and surmounted. The fact that we are here today attending this ceremony, representing our final stage in this journey, it is a remarkable achievement. We are deeply indebted, not just momentarily to a number of persons. We would be missing a major chord in the symphony of our jubilation. We fail to acknowledge that so many players have contributed to the successful orchestra of our formation in this noble seminary. We must therefore acknowledge the various contributions of many whose selfless services have earned us this convocation. Sir Isaac Newton, the renowned English physicist, once remarked that if we have seen far, it was because he was standing on the shoulders of giants. Our beloved professors, if we have achieved any success these years, you have been the giants on whose shoulders we stand. Thank you for your care, understanding, love, and guidance your exemplary lives these past three years, th throughout these years, you, you deconstructed our biases about scripture, the world and history, philosophy, theology, ministry, and so on, and then reconstructed them to achieve the desired balance. Along the journey, you allayed our fears and answered our questions, some of them rather silly. You encountered encouraged us and selflessly moderated our research works, equipping us well towards becoming beacons of light in our day's age. Because of your exemplary efforts, we no longer view the world through the same glass prisms that we once did. And you did that by example. Thank you for your prayers, your love, and for everything. Above all, we are grateful to our, our parents, our spouses, our children, our siblings and relatives, friends and well-wishers who cheered us on, especially when the going got really tough. Thank you for the moral, financial, and prayerful support. Thank you for believing in us. In the same vein, we highly appreciate the friends and well-wishers of our seminary. May the Lord grant you the experience of his, the warmth of his love. To my fellow graduating seminarians, let us go into the world and be exemplary, active, creative, honest and eager to learn from others, for they have a lot to share with us. Please do not lose sight of the fact that the race is not yet finished. To be a good pastor, priest, deacon, or teacher, you must first be a good learner and listener. May the Lord grant you, let us go out and put into practice all the beneficial things that we have learned here. More importantly, let us go forth with open minds for a new and supplementary knowledge. We need not be reminded that education and formation is a progressive discovery of our own ignorance. I have come with a concise and parting message. In all you do, strive to become the salt of the earth, 
and the lives of the world by becoming the best that you can as a priest or deacon, a subdeacon, layperson, parents, seminarians. This is the essence of our identity as Christians. That is the summary of all that we do here. In whatever area you find yourself, let your light shine. Keep polishing yourself. Do not lose your luster. Do not lose your taste. The call to follow Christ or discipleship does not stop as an academic stage in the diaconate formation. It is a lifelong experience. Nobody can offer what he does not have. The apostles must be with him. In Christ, in order to attain the intimate acquaintance with him, that is the call for discipleship, for the whole of life demands adequate knowledge of the master through constant and intimate communion with him. It is from this communion aspect of discipleship that the missionary dimension of witnessing flaws our mission as Christians is to become the salt of the earth and the light of the world. In Matthew chapter 5, it says, Let our light shine before men, so that they may see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. Finally, as John Steinbeck penned, we have to agree that farewell, farewell has a sweet sound of reluctance. Valediction is always accompanied by sweet sorrow. However, goodbyes are not forever. They simply mean we will miss you until we meet again. For although the song is ended, the melody lingers on. Fairly well then, our dear ones. We shall always hold dear the memories we have shared with you. And even when we cannot see physically, we shall always be with you in spirit. We pray that we shall keep meeting and parting until that very precious day when we shall meet and part no more. May God bless you all. Thank you. At this time, we would like to call on His Eminence Metropolitan Ed Pulling, His Eminence Archbishop Daniel, and Father Silvus Akis for the conferring of the degrees. <coughs> Your Eminence, Metropolitan Antoni, Rector of St. Sophia Ukrainian Orthodox Theological Seminary of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of the United States of America. As Provost and Academic Dean of St. Sophia Seminary, with the concurrence of the faculty and the Board of Trustees respectfully, I am recommending for graduation the following individuals who have satisfactorily completed all the requirements of the Master of Divinity, Master of, of Arts and Applied Orthodox Studies, and Youth Ministry Certification Programs. Graduates, please stand. The degree of Master of Divinity for Subdeacon Yaroslav Bilohan, Reverend Father Svetoslav Hutt, Deacon Frank Lucero, Rector Deacon Ihor Machlai, Deacon Miroslav Mikitu, and Deacon Clifford Abel Neal. The degree of Master of Arts and Applied Orthodox Studies, Subdeacon James Cummings, Subdeacon Aaron Holloway, Dimitri Madrick, Subdeacon Volodymyr Tichkurov, Crystal Siniari, and Amherst Hampson, and the certificate in youth ministry, Elizabeth Fair and Susan Jones. By the authority vested in me as the rector of St. Sophia Ukrainian Orthodox Theological Seminary of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of the USA, and by the Secretary of Higher Education in the state of New Jersey, I accept the recommendation of the faculty and the Board of Trustees of St. Sophia Seminary and approve the granting of the degrees of Master of Divinity and Master in Applied Orthodox Studies and Youth Ministry Certification upon the above mentioned individuals. The degree of Master of Divinity is confirmed upon Subdeacon Yaroslav Bilohan.
you her mock line. Deacon Miroslav Mekichu. Deacon Clifford Evan O'Neill. The degree of Master in Applied Orthodox Studies is confirmed upon Subdeacon James R. Cummings. Certificate in Youth Ministry is confirmed upon Elizabeth A. Bear.
behalf of His Eminence Metropolitan and Filming His Eminence, Archbishop Daniel Butler-Sakis, our Board of Trustees and our faculty, we'd like to congratulate all of our graduates this day. Please offer them a very nice round of So, I said that my, uh, my remarks are comparatively brief compared to the uh, amount of time that I usually talk, and, uh, but I'm under threat today because we uh, have uh, a Capitan sits behind me, and, uh, and he told me that if I go beyond a certain limit, he will be tugging on my on my uh, hood uh, as frequently as possible to get me to stop. So I'm, I'm going to be here today and I'm going to be uh, try to be as brief as possible. Your Eminence is our Christian, Father Stephen, the honored professor, the teachers of the seminary, honored graduates. Christ is risen. We are risen. Christ is alive and we are alive in Him. I, I pray that those who live in uh, the world of 2021 
all our graduates and every other person present here throughout the world can express these Paschal greetings with a deeper sense of comprehension than ever before. You, the graduates with a Master of Divinity in the Master of Divinity program of our Master's program in Applied Orthodox Studies and our Youth Ministry Certificate program. You've spent years, the last years of your life, preparing to serve in a world that uh, all too often seems to be shrouded in the deepest form of darkness. The light that shines forth from our, our Lord's empty tomb, however, easily penetrates that darkness can, and can eventually obliterate it if you allow that light to emanate from within you. The darkness can and must give way to the power of the living, caring, and loving Christ risen from the dead. And you, dear graduates, should and must rejoice today with a joy that cannot be restrained. We're surrounded on all sides, on all sides by people who are physically, emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually scarred. The legacy of a pandemic that has affected every one of our lives. Distrust, suspicion, division, and lack of attention to the uh, moral and ethical and biblical codes have raised their ugly heads throughout every aspect of community life all around us, seemingly compounding the ministry of our Holy Church and each of us as individuals. In that situation, I, I, I have said before when I, when I talked about the rebirth of the church in Ukraine, the freedom of Ukraine, and, and the, the church's role in that independent nation, that the church must become the moral conscience of the nation. And I say to you this day, to you graduates and to everyone else here, that the church today must renew its role as the moral cons of our conscience of our nation and be willing to stand up through a profound sense of, of shepherding, emulating the example uh, set by the Good Shepherd, our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ. You, my dear graduates, have become, uh, must become, willing to proclaim the truth, a, a, a powerful truth, that the glory of God is man truly alive in God, and God truly alive in man. You must comprehend the purpose for which our Lord called you to follow Him. You did not choose Him. He chose you from the busy, stressful, and perhaps confusing paths of your lives in, in a worldwide human community. He chose you whether you are to be ordained to the Holy Priesthood, to teach or to minister in any other capacity, to bring you to self-comprehension under the guidance of the Holy Spirit and uniting with Him in the Holy Eucharist. He who eats my body, my body and blood abides in me and I in Him. You, truly alive in Christ, and Christ truly alive in you. The charge that is given to, you, to each of you this day is uh, of your graduation is to, in the knowledge of Christ truly alive in you and you in Him is not something that you can contain within yourselves. You and we all must be Christ to one another, to the stranger, to those who are in prison, those who are oppressed, to those who are suffering from the consequences of so much isolation over the past year and a half. You cannot bear bury Christ alive under a bushel. You can and must allow that light to shine in and through you. You must be Christ.
to all. I, I, I debated whether I was going to share a story that I, I often share when I visit parishes, and, and, and I will share it with you. There was a young boy named Robert. Robert's mother died at childbirth, and Robert's father did absolutely the, the best that he could possibly do to raise his son, but he could never get over the fact that this boy was the reminder that his wife died in his, at the time of his birth. And he ended up over a period of years to, until uh, becoming an alcoholic, losing his job, losing his home, and he took Robert and lived under the streets of New York City. In the subway pits, in little, little holes in the walls where many, many people live in New York City because they have nowhere else to go. And it so happens that Robert's father died when he was just a young teenager. And Robert, no one, no one, Robert fled. And no one even went to seek, seek him out to try, to try to provide for him, to care for him. And so he lived on his, own, on his own on the streets of New York City. He survived by passing by the many corner grocery stores and grabbing a, a, a bun from, or a piece of fruit from a, uh, a, a display that they have out on the sidewalks, and many other, and, and, and many, any other capacity that he, that he could. For the first while, the storekeepers, who were uh, obviously being very kind, did, he, did nothing but holler at him. But finally, he got to the point where Robert's crimes and thievery became a little bit too strong for them to ignore. And they finally called the police and he was arrested. Robert sent himself, was sent to prison. And even in prison, he had, from, from the time his father died, he had isolated himself completely from any other human being. He didn't, he didn't consider anyone uh, capable of caring for him or loving him. So he lived completely alone. And he was in prison, never spoke to anyone, sat in a corner in the cafeteria all by himself at a table. And everyone just gave up trying to do anything with him. Until there was one man who came to the, who was a, a sentence, an elderly man that was sentenced to prison for a very short time for some minor theft. His name was Peter. And Peter, looked at Robert and understood what was going on with the young man. And he said to him, I want to be your friend. Robert never reacted. And this went on for almost eight months, for the entire time that Peter was serving his sentence. Every day he worked with Robert, whether it be in the prison kitchen, whether it be in the laundry, he would tell him stories about his life he would ask him to share questions about his life and got no answer. To good morning, Robert, he was faced with absolute silence and Robert turning his back on him. And never during the entire time did he even acknowledge that Peter existed in his life. Well, just a few months after Peter, Peter was released from prison, the notification came that he had died suddenly of a heart attack. And all the prisoners loved him. He was kind not only to Robert, but to everyone. And they were, they, they, they were mourning for him. And all of a sudden, after the, the announcement was done, they heard from the back of the cafeteria where Robert sat alone, as he began to sob, as he began to cry, uncontrollably, until he finally ended up on the floor writhing in pain. And they went over and they, they started making fun of him, saying, are you crazy? The man was here trying to be your father, tried to be your grandfather, tried to comfort you, tried to love you for all the eight months that he was here, and you didn't even acknowledge that he existed. Finally, Robert was able to gain control of himself. He sat back up in his chair 
holding himself in his own arms. And he was finally able to speak the first words that he had spoken to another human being, not only in prison, but years before that. He was the only Christ I ever knew. It is what we all are called to be, my dear graduates. You must be Christ in whatever capacity you serve the church. We all must be Christ in whatever capacity we live in this, in this world. We must know what we can and we must allow his light to shine in and through us. We must be Christ to all. We must open our hearts and minds to the words of the prayers before and after participation in the Holy Eucharist. And if you fail to read these prayers, you will find no self-comprehension in relation in your relationship with Him. And if you fail to comprehend yourself as alive in Christ, and Christ alive in you, and through you, you face the great danger of being lost in the darkness that can blind us all. Your personal prayer life, my dear graduates, beyond liturgical services, is the key to your priestly service or to any other ministry in Christ Church. It must be the primary guiding force behind you being Christ to others. If you, if you fail in the prayers of preparation and ingratitude, for receiving the body of blood in Christ into your own body, enabling you for, to do so much for his glory. Then the question has to arise in, 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 in anyone's mind, in God's mind. What do they think that the Eucharist really is? How can we come, how can we approach the chalice of our Lord? without having prepared ourselves for what it means and expressing our gratitude for what it gives us. I will share with you one, uh, one the one prayer that I, I've talked about frequently and that is the prayer of St. Simeon or St. Saint, Saint Ephraim the Syrian. It's prescribed for our utilization mostly during the great Lenten season. But I would say to you, you graduates, whatever, with whatever degree or certificate you, you receive today, that it is a prayer with which you need to begin your life every single day at the conclusion of your morning prayers. And that is, O Lord and Master of my life, take away from me the spirit of laziness of lust for power, of idle talk, and despair. Give me rather the spirit of chastity, humility, patience, and love. Yes, O Lord and Queen, King, grant me to see my own sin and judge not my brother. For blessed are you unto the ages of ages. All that we talk about here is key to your ability to serve. If we are lazy, we're not doing God's work. We're not being Christ to others. If we allow ourselves to fall into despair under any circumstances in life, how do we provide hope? Being Christ. For everyone whose lives touch ours. If ours is a desire for, for authority and power, if ours is the, is the desire to 
babble in idle talk or gossip, then we aren't being Christ to those entrusted to us. Give me, Lord, rather the spirit of chastity, humility, patience, and love. In other words, Lord, enable me to be you. All these attributes of, of you throughout the Gospels enable me to be your presence in the lives of those who come to me. Yes, O oh Lord, grant me to see my own sin. And oftentimes that, that fits right in with the gospel. It's so easy, so easy to see the sins of others without even considering. and every day that the Lord will give you the, that will continue to provide that grace that, that, that provision will not be threatened by anything that you do or say or think but that you allow that grace to build up within you grace that you received at the moment of your baptism grace that you received at your chrismation grace that you received in every one of the sacraments that you have participated in life whether it be repentance, the Eucharist, sacra the holy matrimony, that, you, that, you, that that grace will build up and build up and build up until you realize that it can only be, it, it, the only good that can come from it is if you share it. And you touch the lives of others with it. As Christ. God bless you all. May God give you a, a, a never-ending desire, never-ending desire to serve only Him and to, and to somehow learn to put yourself in second position. Christ Thank you. 